Welcome to the Biz Communication Show. I'm your host, Bill Lampton, the Biz Communication Guy, hosting a business communication expert. And when you and I engage in this conversation together, we'll pick up tips and strategies which will definitely help us boost our business. Today, it's a distinct pleasure to host Thomas Power, based in London. He is a an absolute super connector, one of the most connected people in the world. Thomas has met more than 30,000 people face to face, spanning a 42 year career. He has published eight books. He's spoken at more than a thousand conferences in 60 countries. And now Thomas spends his life supporting a hundred entrepreneurs worldwide inside a private community with his wife, Penny Power. It's called the BIP 100. And let me mention that Penny Power is not a stage name. <laughs> that is her real name, Penny Power. Thomas and Penny believe that business is personal. We and sure now, do. Yes, we all do. And so now let's switch to welcoming Thomas so that we can talk about these fascinating topics. Hello, Thomas Power. Welcome to the Biz Communication Show. Bill, thank you so much for inviting me on your show. Your reputation precedes you. You've been doing this for so long. Everybody loves your material. It's a real honor to be on your show, Bill. Well, for a guest of your caliber to say that is, is very heartwarming. Thank you. Thomas, let's start with what I just mentioned, that business is personal. And in fact, one day I hope to interview your wife, Penny, because I'm reading now her book, Business is Personal. So this has been a mantra that both of you have followed for decades. So elaborate on that for us. We all know that Business is very practical, business, business is very serious, business is very demanding. What do we mean by business is personal? Well, you know, there's a scene in the movie Taken where Liam Neeson is chasing the French guy who's kidnapped his daughter and auctioned his daughter. And he chases him until he finds him and then eventually he shoots him. And as he's entering the lift where he shoots him in Paris, the French guy says to Liam Neeson, it was nothing personal. It was just business. And Liam Neeson offloads six rounds into his body and says, it was all personal for me. Ah, uh, yes, it was. I remember that movie. And of course, there were sequels to it. Taken Two and Taken Three, I believe. Yeah, many, many sequels. But Penny and I have always believed that business is personal. And often in business meetings and different opportunities around the world, you often hear people say, it's nothing personal, it's just business. And you hear this in different meetings around the world when people are perhaps um, criticizing you, find fault with you, there's something wrong with you, they don't want you as a supplier, they don't want you as a client, and they might very glibly say, oh, Bill, it's, it's nothing personal, Bill, it's just business. It's, just so it's, almost, it's almost an excuse. We can say anything to you, we can do anything to you, as long as we say it, it's uh, just business, nothing, nothing personal. It's, it's almost a, an out or an alibi or something, isn't it? Correct, correct, that's exactly what it is. Um, it's, it's very similar to when people say, uh, can we speak frankly? Can I be honest with you with respect? All these kind of phrases are misinterpreted. In fact, uh, think Th Thomas, I'll, I'll have to say, I'll have to say on, on that one, to be honest with you, I have taught people for years. If you have to identify when you're being honest, and I'm going to assume that you're dishonest the rest of the time, it's a terrible phrase that we ought to avoid, isn't it? It's a terrible phrase. Any, any, any phrase that can be miscommunicated, I, I think, should be avoided. And I think when you spend a third of your life working, a third of your life sleeping, and a third of your life working, and the other third is not doing the other two, then 
since work is a third of your life, then it's very personal. People's their own businesses, whether you look at Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or Elon Musk, whoever you wish to name, Michael Dell, whichever entrepreneur, big business Thomas or Power. tiny business. <laughs> Thomas Powers in their group. It's uh, it's about relationships with people. It's relationships with you. It's it's our relationship between you and me. And we value, I think we value the relationship with one another more than the business. And I think people who put relationships number one and relationships above the transaction, they consider business to be personal. People who put the transaction above the relationship, well, they're buying and they're hedge fund guys, buying and selling companies for just a market cap valuation. And unfortunately, we've seen much of business has become trader just as a commodity. And to me, that's not a world I want to live in. It reminds me very much of a, a guest I interviewed a couple of weeks ago, Thomas, who was talking about um, emotional intelligence yes. and illustrated with a number of statistics that it's certainly not necessarily the people with the highest IQ who are going to succeed. And she had uh, even salary statistics to back it up that what really advances us in this world is, even in the business world, is the quality, and to use your last name, the power of our relationships, as long as they are authentic and genuine, correct? Correct. I mean, if you think of the, I don't know how many years you've been working, Bill, but I, I imagine it's even more than me, but I've been working for 42 years, and I can remember the very, very first business relationship I had back then at the age of 16. And I'm still in touch with that person to this day. And I still talk to that person once a month. And that was 42 years ago. I think every, I've always believed the relationship is more valuable than the transaction, than the deal. Always believe that. And therefore, I'd always rather hold on to the, the relationship and lose the deal or lose the transaction or lose the opportunity because I value the friendship of the relationship above all things. And therefore, that's that's why business has become very personal for, for both of us. And but, in fact, if you don't have those relationships, you're not going to get the transactions that your business needs. Well, it's funny you say that, but you can you can do business with people you don't like. You can buy products from from companies that you don't agree with. Um, a lot of people buy from Amazon because they deliver things in 24 hours, but they don't necessarily like the organization. Some people love Jeff Bezos. Some people dislike Jeff Bezos, but they still buy from the company. So it's not, it's not necessarily true anymore because we have these huge personalities who run these companies. And we may or may not like them, we may or may not trust them, but we still consume from their companies. So it's become a delicate, it's become a very refined area, I think, how you interpret the relationship with a company, your level of trust with that company around the personality of that company. It's become, it's I would become reword very that, to define. Uh, okay, I would, I would reword that a little bit. And saying that you and Penny have focused for a long time and you still do on entrepreneurs. So yes. with, the, with the huge companies, yes, we might buy, buy from them because we need their product and or their service and they're the only ones who provide it at top level. But when we're an entrepreneur, that's often a one-on-one -a -on -one transaction of sales and the relationship is key there, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think in small business, relationships are absolutely number one. And if you can build deep, intimate relationships with people for the long term, for life, ideally, because if you if you look at where we are now in 2022, as we come out of COVID, we've shifted to an environment where people are seeking intimacy, privacy, trust, support and friendship. These are the five things that people want the most. Intimacy, privacy, trust, support, and friendship. That's what they want in business. And that, to me, defines what a relationship is all about. So if you can focus on those, delivering those five things, you'll keep your relationships for life in business. 
And you want business relationships to last forever. And they can only do that if you focus on being intimate with one another. Yes, we use the phrase lifetime customer. And that's that's what many of us are seeking. Thomas, one uh, very key point that I definitely want you to elaborate on. Many people, for example, would have read Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. And in there, of course, he used, uh, he, he talked about a mastermind, a, a small group that would get together and would share ideas periodically and critique each other's ideas, make suggestions, learn from each other. And there are many people who have done that, uh, and they've done it within, say, a, a 50 to 100 mile radius. I remember I live an hour away from Atlanta, Georgia, and, and there were several years that I met with a group of about a dozen people for lunch and discussion and sharing ideas. The major difference when it comes to your career, though, is that you weren't looking at a 50 mile radius. <laughs> Yours has been an expanding and continually expanding worldwide venture and adventure. What was it that prompted you to have a global target instead of just a local target? Yeah, it's, that's a good question, Bill, because it, I think it's kind of happened by accident. We started locally in London with our masterminds. And then they went from being physical to online. And then people came in from overseas, first from Belgium, then from the Netherlands, then from Australia. And then people wanted to have them over there. And then we had physical events over there, physical masterminds over there. And then they went online. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't say we planned for it to be that way, but I think it just spread from the physical to the online, then it went international. And of course, now with the last two years, the whole thing shifted onto Zoom. Now people are desperate to get back into a room, in a local room, certainly in London. And so we're now doing a mixture of mastermind on Zoom and mastermind in physical uh, private rooms in hotels. But pe people want both, but the, the international masterminds we run are incredibly popular uh, because you get the diversity. I think one of the attractions of international mastermind is the diversity of thought because you get people from many different uh, cultures, uh, every race, every color, every religion, every different profile type, plus you get the international language. And this gives people, I think, a broader perspective. So that's why people like the international ones. But equally, Bill, people still love the local ones. As you say, Napoleon Hill, 1937, Think and Grow Rich, little groups of 12 in the community where you live or work. And it's not either or. I mean, we can be, we can be both, can't we? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think I, I personally like the Zoom masterminds and I, I love the physical ones. Um, they're just different. One is through a screen, one is in. But I, I think from a from a depth point of view, an intimacy point of view, nothing beats the physical mastermind face to face to me. Yes. And we're grateful that we can start getting that back to some extent wherever we live now. Uh, and, and we hope that continues to increase because the the face to face you and i are having a terrific conversation now which we would not have had um, before 1996 <laughs> zoom and and the internet make that possible now we have time for one more question let's talk about your current venture that i mentioned in the introduction the bp100 what is the bp100 well, it stands for, it, the BIP stands for Business is Personal. And the 100 is the size of the group. So what we're building now, we have 100 people in 100 niches, 100 experts in 100 niches worldwide. And so we've been interviewing people all over the world. We've done a couple of thousand interviews. And we've so far chosen 70 experts around the world to be part of what is a global international mastermind of 100 people. And we meet three times a week on Zoom. And we have dinners and lunches each month around the world as well. 
and it's our it's our our first attempt to build um, an international mastermind at scale with a hundred people. It's our first attempt at that. We started building it during the lockdown, which began in the UK on Monday, the twenty third of March, which is like nine eleven for me now. That date. Oh yes, you remember that date. I remember that day, and we've done two thousand interviews, and we've we've found seventy super super people. They're super connectors. They're super learners. They know how to support one another. They they, it's an amazing group of personal business friendship around the globe, and uh, we're very keen to expand it around the globe. And it's uh, it's been a it's been a lovely community building exercise for us both. I noticed, of course, that you have you have given a thousand speeches in sixty countries. Uh, has has the opportunity reopened where you can travel and give speeches to live audiences? Or are you still depending mostly on technology to get your message across? Yeah, it's mainly Zoom, Zoom or Teams. The conferences now are on uh, are online. It's beginning to open up. We've had some bookings for March um, in Europe, so it's beginning. And I think the conferences will come back. But I tend to think now, because people have seen how much they can do on, on Zoom, on, on shows like yours, on podcasts, on Spotify, on Clubhouse, on LinkedIn, on t- I think now people know how much they can do online. It's got to be a very special event, a very special venue, a very special reason to get back together face to face. But I do think it will come back, but I don't think it will come back at scale and for another year or so yet. I still think we've got a while to run um, because business travel has not come back at the scale that people are expecting. But we're we're only at the point, certainly in Europe, where we're just unwinding the restrictions. So by the time it's fully unwound, it'll probably be the summer. And then I think you you need a year to plan a good conference. So I, I think we'll be back to full speed the spring of 2023, Bill. Let's hope so. And you and I have been very fortunate in that we were familiar with technology before COVID came along. I I think I was doing this biz communication show four or five years ago, I believe I started. And many people are also blessed that uh, uh, platforms such as Zoom are not that difficult to learn, even if you're not a techie. Uh, It's It's a a rather easy platform, and some of the others uh, are easy to learn as well. All you have to do, as as you do with anything you want to learn, is get the right mentor. And, of course, uh, uh, people in your mastermind group, people in your BIP 100, uh, they, they all can be of assistance. Thomas, this is so fascinating to talk with you. I've admired your work ever since... The Academy days, which we didn't get to talk about, but but that was when you and Penny began to not only have a global presence, but a global impact, which, as we all know, has magnified and will continue to expand. There are people who are watching us on YouTube. There are people who are listening on the podcast who I'm sure will want to get in touch with you. So Please give us your contact information, Thomas. Okay, so just just to let everyone know, my email and my WhatsApp is published on my Twitter and my LinkedIn profile. But my email is thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S, at B-I-P 100 dot club. Or alternatively, alternatively, WhatsApp. I love giving out my WhatsApp number, which is plus four four, anywhere in the world, plus four four. Seven eight seven five six nine five zero one two. Thank you, Thomas. I encourage our viewers and listeners to contact Thomas Power. He is in a niche by himself with with his wife Penny, as uh, as globally connected and is truly one of the most approachable people. I know as well. So be sure to contact him. And now since he's given his contact 
information. I'm delighted to give mine, Bill Lampton, the biz communication guy. So logically, my website is biz, B-I-Z, bizcommunicationguy.com. I invite you to go there, check my services for corporations and leaders, give me a call. And also, I certainly invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's listed as Bill Lampton, PhD. You'll find many other interviews from the Biz Communication Show, and you'll also find other instructional videos. So I invite you to go there and subscribe. Thomas, 20, 30 seconds closing comment. I would say to people that the, the most important thing is being connected. And the more connected you are, the more attractive you are. So build your connections around the globe on LinkedIn, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever is your favorite platform, TikTok. Build your connectedness in your network, in your community, and that will build your attractiveness. That's what I would say to everyone, Bill. Great success formula there, Thomas, very much so. Again, thanks to Thomas Power for being with us on the Biz Communication Show. Thanks to those of you who joined us on YouTube and also on the podcast. Be with us again next week for another version of the Biz Communication Show. I'm your host, Bill Lampton, the Biz Communication God.